I am the gospel preacher at the Broadway Street Church of Christ in Mark Tree, Arkansas. What a privilege it is to be talking to you today about the church that Christ built and purchased with his own blood this morning. Turn with me in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18. That is where we will be this morning. But before we get started, I want to ask Though all those that are listening this morning, I want to ask you a simple question. If you're not a member of the Church of Christ, why are you a member of the religious organization of which you're a member? And, and, and I urge you and I beseech you and I hope that our answers will be, or our questions will be answered by the Word of God and the Word of God alone and the Word of God only. Before we get into Matthew chapter 16, I want you to think just for a minute with me about some scriptures. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, Paul told Timothy, For all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. He did not say some Scripture or part of it or most of it. Paul told Timothy that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all or unto every good work. You see, we believe at this time, and I know you as well, that the Scriptures can make us complete. We don't need outside help. All we need is the Bible this morning. All we need is the Bible this morning to find out what we truly want to do and what we truly, or where we truly want to worship. In 1 Peter chapter 4, in verse 11, consider what Peter said. Peter said, if any man, not some men or most men, but if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. They thus said the Lord. Or if any man minister, let him do so as the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ our Lord, to, to whom be dominion and glory forever and ever. Also, consider, uh, consider also what Peter said in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. Peter said, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Are you ready to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you? Are you ready to give an answer for what you do in church or for where you worship or for how you worship by the Bible? So, we go back to our question. If you're not a member of the Church of Christ, why are you a member of the church that you are a member of? Are you a member of your religious organization because that was the church your mom and dad were members of? A lot of people today in our society and definitely in the religious world are members of a certain church because it is all they have ever known from childhood. Many people go around town and they pick the church because that is all they have ever known. Many will say, well, I, I'm a Baptist because my parents were Baptists. Some will say, well, I'm a Methodist, you know, because my parents were Methodists. I'm a Presbyterian because my parents were Presbyterians. And that's all I've ever known. Is it because that Maybe the church that you attend is the closest to your home. It's just the most convenient. You know, a lot of people do not think it matters where one worships. A lot of people do not think it matters how one worships. A lot of people think uh, it doesn't matter which church you go to. A lot of people think it doesn't matter how we worship or where we worship. Is it because, or the church that you attend, is it because it's the nicest building? Maybe you attend the church that you attend because it's the biggest building in town. Maybe it has the nicest facilities. Maybe it has those that are closest to your age and you decide to go to this church because there are those your age that you can communicate with better than you can of a variety of ages. Or maybe you go to the church because they have uh, great youth facilities for your young ones. Well, my friends, all these reasons that we have just given are not biblical reasons for why one should go to church. All the reasons that we have set out in the beginning of this lesson are foreign from the Bible. None of these reasons is why we need to sit down and say, this is why I go to church, or this is why I go to church. Our reasoning for attending the church where we attend needs to be based on Scripture and Scripture alone without addition and without subtraction. That is why Paul said in Colossians 3.17, and whatsoever, it doesn't matter, and whatsoever you do in word or in deed, do all by the authority or in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever we do, we do by the authority of Jesus Christ. But these answers that I've given you that a lot of the religious world gives is the majority of the answers that people will give when you ask them, 
where they attend. Let me give you an illustration. The husband asked his wife, who asked his mom, who asked his grandmother why they attend the church which they attend. Do you see the meaning of the illustration? Meaning that family had no idea why they were attending the church that they attend. They couldn't tell you why. It was just tradition. They were raised that way or there was other reasoning besides Scripture. My friends, the, major the majority of the religious world has no clue why they attend the church that they attend. The majority of the religious world cannot give you scriptural bounds for why they attend the church that they choose or that, that they attend. And most answers that people will give, it fits their personal standards or their personal wants. A lot of people choose churches for entertainment and other things other than what the Lord has told us to do. So my question is, if your neighbor were to ask you, why are you a member of the church where you go? Could you give them a reason based on Scripture? Remember Peter said, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts always and be ready to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Or maybe your neighbor would say, you know, one church is as good as another. It really doesn't matter where you go to church because one church is good as another. How would you answer them? Well, I would have to say, no, one church is not as good as another because Jesus only purchased one church with his blood. So let me tell you this morning, just for uh, just real quick, why I am a member of the Church of Christ. I'm going to tell you why I'm a member of the Church of Christ. Number one, because it was founded by the scriptural builder, Christ. You see, no church could be scriptural, my friends, unless it was founded by the scriptural builder. For instance, the fact that a religious body exists is proof that it was founded by someone. There are at least... 3,000 different denominations in the world. And when you walk around town, maybe Jonesboro, you'll see different religious organizations, different names for churches. And the 3,000 different denominations most likely teach 3,000 different things, maybe some the same. But if there's two, that's too much. And when I say different, I mean everyone doing something different or worshiping different or there's disagreements and that is why we have so many different churches because of differences in doctrines and teaching. But why is that? You know, thus, I'm, each group will, will either be scriptural or unscriptural. Each religious organization will either have a scriptural builder or an unscriptural builder. I believe truly that I can ask anyone in the religious world, I could ask many different religious people who the founder of their church was. I truly believe they'll say Christ. I truly believe if I said, who is the founder of your church, they will say Christ. But listen, if ten different people from ten different religious organizations were to say Christ, either one person is right or all ten is wrong. My friends, Jesus Christ only found it one church. Don't you want to make sure you're a part of it? Don't you want to make sure you're a member of it? Don't you want to make sure that that is where you attend? Because that is where salvation is found. So now we turn over to Matthew chapter 16. In Matthew chapter 16, we have what is prophesied through the, the Old Testament. Jesus said to Peter upon the confession that he made in Matthew chapter 16, beginning in verse 18. Jesus said, upon this rock, the confession that Peter made that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Jesus says, I will build my church. Singular. Do you see, Jesus didn't, say, ha, ha, Jesus didn't say two or three. He said, I will build my church. You see, the Bible teaches that there is only one church. Many today claim that there is one God, but many churches. My friends, it is certain that no church can be scriptural unless it was founded by Christ. For instance, Joseph Smith, a man by the name of Joseph Smith, he founded the Mormon religion at age 24. And then he published what we have, uh, what the world has today, the religious world has, or the Mormons have today, as the Book of Mormon, which is called another testament of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Is that right? Well, no, my friends, we have already quoted uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, 16, all Scripture. We don't need anything else. The Scripture makes us complete. The Scripture furnishes us unto every good work before God, the creator of the universe. My friends, thousands upon thousands of people in this world call themselves Mormons. And I'm afraid that many do not know from where they originated. I'll give you another example. 
You think about the Baptist church. Well, the Baptist church in our society has really rampantly it has grown. Rapidly growing. There's many different kind of Baptist churches. You see, the Baptist church started in 1609. The Baptist church started in 1609 with a man by the name of Joseph Smith. But see, the church of the Bible that we read in the New Testament in Acts chapter 2, which was prophesied from the Old Testament, it started in AD 33 in Jerusalem as prophesied by the Old Testament prophets that were inspired. The church, the church was started in Jerusalem in AD 33, and that is why we have that in the book of Acts chapter 2, the church that they were added to after baptism. You see, if a church, my friends, was founded on John Calvin or Joseph Smith or John the Baptist or any other man, it's not scriptural. The only way it can be scriptural is if it was founded upon Jesus Christ. Jesus, in keeping with his promise to build the church, he gave Peter the authority to state the terms of admission into the kingdom or church. There in Matthew chapter 16, 18, he told Peter, I will give unto thee the kings of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Well, then you turn over to Acts chapter 2, and Peter stated these terms. You think about Acts chapter 1, Jesus Christ ascended back to heaven, sits at the right-hand throne of God. Then what? In Acts chapter 2 comes along the day of Pentecost, the very first gospel sermon ever preached. And all these people around thought the apostles were drunk, that they were crazy, that they were, they, they were speaking nonsense, and, 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 he, and, and Peter started prophesying, prophesying from Joel and all different kinds of Old Testament prophets, and he, and he gets in... To verse 37, he says, Ye men of Israel, you have crucified Jesus Christ, the Savior. Then what? Well, what shall men, they, they asked, men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter said, repent and be baptized. That was the keys, the admission into the church that was prophesied or that was said of Je uh, that Jesus stated in Matthew chapter 16. And then in verse 47, they were added to the church. You see, they weren't added to the Baptist church. They were not added to the Methodist church or the Presbyter Presbyterian church, the Catholic church. My friends, they were added to the church that Jesus purchased with his own blood, Acts chapter, Acts chapter 20 and verse 28. That's the church of Christ. And if the church was founded by Christ, my friends, it should bear his name. And no human being ever had the authority to do what Jesus did. No human being ever had the authority to establish a church. Many will say, listen, I'll go to the church that I want to, and as I attend that church, I will at least say that this church is founded by Christ. In essence, it wasn't founded by Christ. My friends, the Baptist church came along a thousand ye thousands of years after 8033 when the church that the Lord purchased with His blood was established. 